Good morning. Welcome to another episode of our Common Core training tools. Today we're in grade one and we're very excited to start to explore some elementary school experiences with Common Core Georgia Performance Standards. We are in Powder Springs, Georgia today um, at Vaughn Elementary School with first grade teacher Nancy David. She's going to talk to us about how they've been implementing Common Core and what their experiences have been like this year on the ground. Um, then we'll talk a little bit about some specifics and some unit plans and, and individual lessons and strategies. Mm -hmm. um, so before we begin, I would like for you to just tell me a little bit about um, how you were introduced to Common Core, of what your first impressions were, and, and mm -hmm. how your sort of um, acclimation has been. Well, I've been teaching for about 22 years, so I've been through some big curriculum changes yeah. over the years. And this one I was really excited about because this one is rigorous. It has a lot of opportunities for integration. We, it wasn't thrust upon us as here it is, start it tomorrow. We dipped our toe in the water. We were able to take part in some training sessions that were offered through the county. So you and started last year learning about we the did. We did. We started implementing in language, language arts and in uh, math. Just experimenting with some of those shifts. Right. And right. Trying to see what the difference was between the Georgia Performance Standards and the new Common Core and how we were going to make that shift. So some of that crosswalk business. And mm -hmm. I know one of the things was that we went from, um, there were several standards in GPS. These are a little bit cleaner and more elegant. How's that worked for you as far as having fewer but broader standards? Do you find that that, that works better for you? or? I feel it works better because it narrows my focus down to looking at that standard standard and knowing exactly what they need to be doing, but you do have to bring in a lot of other things from the standards with integration. Right, because you're going to always be addressing more than one standard right. at a time, you which we really always yeah. have. Yeah. Have anyway. You can't and just I, do one. I know that um, at your school you have a standards-based report card, which we're going to talk about a little bit at the end, mm -hmm. about how you've actually sort of created some domains where you've put some of those standards together. Absolutely. Um, have you found that, so, so you're a fan. You're, you're, I'm you're, a fan. You're, you're I'm a big fan board. of it, yes. Okay, so you guys did full impl implementation this year. What would you identify as the, what were the biggest changes in your classroom? The biggest shifts? The you? biggest shift, I believe, is the rigor. The, okay. the rigor with the reading and the rigor with the informational texts and implementing that and integrating that, not only just into your reading instruction, but in elementary school, we also have to bring in the content and the science and social studies. And health. You got science and social studies, and you also have that foundational piece that I know mm -hmm. sometimes we in middle and high school um, forget that you actually have to teach them how to read before you can have them starting to read these books. We like to say K through two, we teach them to read to learn. Uh, excuse me, to um, learn to read, and then three three five to read to learn. So we put a big, big emphasis upon giving them a foundation that is solid. Now, a lot of people talk about with the big shifts. We know that the big shifts um, have been identified as the more more complex text, so generally higher lexile and maybe mm -hmm. more sophisticated structures of text more informational text, Absolutely. and then integrating the standards together, as you mentioned, with the reading and the writing. Um, so, so those three shifts, I, I'm wondering how that looks, just, just it, as far as the texts that have changed, did you find that it was just a lexile jump? Or are you really having to, because I know in K2, there's an NA for mm -hmm. lexile, mm -hmm. so you have a lot of flexibility with what you choose. What kinds of changes did you think about making to the text that you brought to the classroom? Because you talked about rigor, and a lot of times mm -hmm. we say rigor, um, but people that means different things to different people, like what the definition is. Um, what are a couple of ways that you thought differently about the text that you chose for your classroom? Well, first of all, we thought harder texts, more rigorous texts, a higher lexiles. Even though we have an NA next to K and 1, we went ahead and we have some that are up to 1,000, but we can take pieces of those and put them up and lift that text from it to do lessons with, pertaining to pieces of the standards. Because it's interesting, in elementary school you do have um, sometimes read-alouds, and there, there are beloved children's books with, uh, you know, like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, mm -hmm. Wizard of Oz, mm -hmm. that we've talked about in, in some of the DOE unit plans, mm -hmm. and we'll talk about um, how you guys right. used some of those and adopted and adapted others. Um, but some of those 
um, you, you do have that broad flexibility to be able to read aloud a very high lexile book Absolutely. or bring in yeah. a picture book with no words at all. Mm -hmm. um, so so if there's a lot of teacher flexibility and a lot of teacher responsibility. A lot of flexibility and a lot of creativity on your part as a teacher. Well, we can't wait to see how you have used your um, boatloads of creativity to bring this to fruition in your classroom. Um, in the next segment, I'm going to be talking to Nancy about some of the unit, the specific unit plans that they chose, how they used the resources that are available out there, and what they created on their own.